It's Oktoberfest season at Thorpe Park and Alton Towers, so earlier this week I visited both of these theme parks to experience the food, drink, entertainment and theming on offer during this Bavarian festival, so you can decide which park does Oktoberfest best. Of course, I'll also be getting on some rides too, showing you what kind of queue times you can expect during off-peak, checking out some new single rider lines and purchasing an egg. We'll begin at Thorpe Park as my Alton Towers vlog didn't quite go to plan, but more on that later. Well, good morning from Thorpe Park, where it is apparently also Oktoberfest here. There's no mention of it anywhere, so I want to go and wander into the traditional Oktoberfest area, see if there's anything going on, and if not, go on some rides. Well, we have a grill tower, and they're doing crack hours, which are the best of the German sausages, in my opinion, because they've got smoky bacon in as well, so we might give that a look later. Swarm doing its thing in the background there. Oh, they have these interesting signs up. There's one here, a tidal wave. And also storm surge here, right by the Oktoberfest stage. So we do have a pretzel stage set up. We've got loads of Christmas trees around for some reason. Are they hinting at a Christmas event? But there's honestly not a lot. They haven't gone mad on the food stalls or anything this year. These are quite cool. Got some little ski lifts here, you can chill in, sit in these which I intend to do right now. Hi, I'm in a ski lift. So food wise, we've got a Ben and Jerry's van, which suggests happy cows. We have nachos. We have pretzels and curly fries. So and a few options here. It's not quite as, uh, not quite a selection all towers had yesterday or indeed as much as they've had in the past here, but still a good few things to try out. So I should be coming back to this at lunchtime. And making some decisions. I went for the main stage today. Quite interested in Danger Goat. Not the band, just a dangerous goat. Be quite fun, wouldn't it? So like at Alton Towers yesterday, Oktoberfest does feel a bit scaled down at Thorpe Park this year. However, I do really like what they've done with the area, like the ski lifts and the trees and the signs of the roller coasters. That's all really cool. So I'll come back later, check out some entertainment, get some food. But for now, I'm gonna to head to Swarm. And there I am referencing my visit to Alton Towers yesterday again, when there's not actually any vlog or footage from it. So full disclosure, what happened was I was trialing uh, some new lapel mics for the recording. Unfortunately, the audio from Alton Towers came out sounding like this. Well, good morning from Oktoberfest here at Alton Towers. Now, obviously that's nowhere near the standards that I could accept going out on the channel. However, I did record a lot of footage from my visit. So here is the abridged version of my day at Alton Towers, and then we'll head back to Thorpe Park. But at least then, hopefully it'll all make a bit more sense. Cheers. As in previous years, Oktoberfest's main location was on the lawn in front of the towers. There are numerous food offerings such as sweets, toasted marshmallows, naturally bratwursts are available, but also German meatballs and churros, etc. Along with the return of the Double Decker Bar, which was selling a few speciality beers for the occasion and also a duck eating mud. There's also a range of Alton Towers Oktoberfest merchandise on sale. Over on the main stage, the compare introduced various acts throughout the day. I caught a bit of party pilots who played well-known pop and rock songs. Thankfully, considering the weather, Alton Towers have a covered seating area for this year's event. Elsewhere, there are some game stalls, the return of the fire pits, and some Instagrammable photo spots dotted around. Feeling peckish, I grabbed some spicy German meatballs and potatoes and half a pint of Fantastiche, which came to £13, and be aware that these external vendors don't offer Merlin annual pass discount. The food was decent though. It is a bit of a shame though that the covered seating area in Mutiny Bay isn't included in the October festivities this year though, as it has been in previous years. Elsewhere at Alton Towers, I checked out the newly introduced single rider lines on Spinball Wizard and 13, which are very welcome additions, continue to get soaked, although the weather meant low wait times for my rides on Nemesis Reborn, Nemesis Subterra, Galactica, and Wicker Man. I also bought this Nemesis Reborn egg. So that was a short version of my experience at Alton Towers for October. Fest. Let's head back to Thorpe Park. Comment below if you'd like to see aliens legalised. If we do, we get more of this. So I'm up for it. So I've arrived at the Swarm for their 10 minute queue and don't know about you guys, I think they may have underestimated the queue line slightly because it's actually here. And it keeps going and going and going. It's probably about an hour. 
So I'm going to go somewhere else. Well, Swarm was a no-go due to that massive queue. However, Hyperia looking far more reasonable up here. 35 in the main line, so I'm going to go and peak the single rider queue, see how that's looking. But yeah, obviously a quiet-ish day in September was what I was hoping for. It's a lot busier than I expected. But if I can get a few rides on Hyperia today, I'm going to be pretty happy. So let's go check out the single rider line. So you probably can't hear me over the mental noise, but I did get a Krakow and a half pint. I came to 12.50 all in. I'll have a chat to you about Hyperia in a minute. That was really good because Hyperia is great. Anyway, food. So my Krakow has been half eaten, half eaten because I got a phone call halfway through and then it went cold. But Hyperia was really good prior to that. Um, what more can I say about Hyperia? It is the best coaster here in the UK by a distance and it's still riding really well. There was a bit of a rattle at the bottom of the drop, nothing too serious, just a bit of side to side shuffle, but I'm gonna head back to that later. The single rider queue probably took as long as the main queue, lots of uh, doubles and groups of four here today, but it did clear out. So I'm gonna see what it looks like a bit later on, try and get a few more laps on that. For now, I'm gonna head to Detonator because I've not done this since it got rethemed for Big uh, Easy Boulevard earlier this year. It's currently in a not minute queue. So let's go drop. <laughs> Well, I've successfully detonated. That was not a naught minute wait at all. I say it's about 15, largely due to very slow operations on that occasion. Like we were sat in our seats for five minutes before our restraints were checked. Not really sure what was going on, but it just seemed very, very sluggish throughout every cycle. They seem to be taking a really long time to get the gondola up. Interesting, but I mean, the queues weren't massive, so there's nothing too major to complain about. Sat facing Nemesis Inferno, you get some wonderful views looking down on it as it's whizzing around its track. But yeah, it's a really solid drop tower, that quite forceful, but as with all drop towers, it's up and down and then you're done. So, despite being a random Wednesday in the middle of September, it is surprisingly busy here today and queue times are a lot higher than I generally expected. I went towards Nemesis Inferno there because it was on an advertised 10 minutes, but it immediately jumped up to 35. So, currently heading in the direction of stealth. Well, it says 15, but based on how today's gone, do we trust it? I mean, it looks less than that, to be fair. So let's go and do some stealth. Come on, come on. Well, I'm sat here in the sunken gardens, having just ridden stealth. I've commented on stealth so many times on this channel. It is just a short, sharp shock of a roller coaster, but that acceleration really is something else. I just wanted to highlight the sunken gardens because this is an area of the park that's not many people know about these days. There's a very little chilled out section just behind stealth here. If we have a quick look around, it's actually uh, it's quite picturesque. Well, Nemesis Inferno has dropped to a manageable 20 minute queue, so I think that's up next. So, got this far into Nemesis Inferno queue and it broke. Hello, I'm an ice cream and Nemesis Inferno was decent. We waited about 15 minutes for the maintenance issue to be resolved, which wasn't too bad at all and then got on for a decent ride. So I stopped being an ice cream because it was uncomfortable and I had a cold head. But I think on balance, having ridden Nemesis Reborn yesterday, I find myself preferring Nemesis Inferno. And I'm not sure if that's an expectation thing, whether I have slightly lower expectations, so it impresses me more. But Inferno just rides a lot better to me. It's still got the fierceness, but without unnecessary juddering and rattles. There's a couple in there, but it kind of feels fierce rather than uncomfortable. 
And we have the Oompa Band. Well, after a brief downpour and a bit of a sit in a ski lift again, I'm now heading towards Colossus. So this had a big retouch this year as part of the Sparkle project. I've not actually ridden it since the start of the season. It's only on a 10 minute queue, so let's go and get rattled by Colossus, and see how it's doing in 2024. Well, just heading into the Colossus station. It started absolutely tipping it down for rain. So this should be fun. Wish me luck. Colossus was okay there, not too rough at all. It's a walk on as well, which always helps. And um, yeah, I mean, it rattles, but if you lean into restraints, it's not too bad. Uh, that quad barrel roll is a little punishing on the shoulders towards the end, but other than that, it's all right. It's not too bad. Riding better than I remember it. So yeah, no complaints there. Um, one advantage from riding Colossus is from the top, you can look down onto the Hyperia queue and see exactly how long it is and it don't look too bad. So I'm heading back to Hyperia for the afternoon, I think. So I've decided to jump into the main Hyperia queue line. It's an advertised 40 minute wait. The single ride is about the same length it was last time, which was about 40 to 45 anyway. So I thought I'd give the main line a go. nine on Hyperia there which means you get absolutely dragged over that drop and it is a slightly more intense experience I do think I prefer the front slightly just because I do like the hangover and the views you get but just about anywhere you sit on that train it's a magnificent experience I'm glad I rode it when you when I did because you may notice it has absolutely started tipping it down since it started as I hit the brake run so I was quite fortunate that the uh, the heavens didn't completely open while we were on there because I think that would make it a slightly more uncomfortable experience in fact they're putting out announcements over the loudspeakers to say that uh, that the weather may make it uncomfortable so there you go anyway with about 40 minutes left of, of ride time and some pretty poor weather I think we're gonna head out of the park so let's go somewhere dry we'll have a chat about Oktoberfest at Alton Towers Thought Park and who we think did it best well it's a little bit warmer and drier in here and Oktoberfest across the two days at Alton Towers and Thought Park I think it's been quite an interesting experience it's definitely felt scaled back in both resorts I think Alton Towers felt a little bit grander, whereas Thorpe Park felt a bit more focused. I love the like the skiing aspect here, the guys going around on the hoverboards with skis attached. And I think the little um, signs with the ride details on was really cool too. Uh, I think Alton Towers probably excelled when it came to the entertainment itself and had a larger selection of food, uh, as well as a lot more beer options too. So it really depends what you're looking for from Oktoberfest. Personally, I'd say I probably had a slightly better day here today at Thorpe than Alton Towers, but I think that's just my preference for theme parks this season, certainly Merlin-wise anyway, I think Thorpe Park are head and shoulders above the rest. But what do you think? Which park would you prefer to go to for Oktoberfest? And speaking of Germany, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then I've got a whole bunch of German theme parks coming up this month. I'll be visiting Heide Park and Hansa Park this weekend, so there'll be vlogs from both of those. And then towards the end of the month, I'll be joined, joined by Theme Park Insanity, and we're going to Europa Park, Trips Drill, and Holiday Park. So if you'd like to see all of that content, then please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.